all dressed up on Mountain Dew. <laughs> I love that. It has been a week since we've been here. It feels a lot longer, but we're still in our hussies. Al, Nick, how are you doing? We're back. Yeah, I'm doing okay, mate. Just hanging in there. Nick, what's happening? I mean, I'm just back in the house after the. We, we did yeah. a sort of uh, relay race to oh, sure. keep keep the show on the road. Some social distance deliveries because I think it was, it was maybe about five weeks ago that uh, we, we sorted each other out with the, the can I the stock so that we can continue doing these That's these correct. virtual shows. But uh, but we we're running low. We we're running low, so we had to do a top up. Um, so I Nick was the Nick was the the delivery driver for that. He's I was the Alpine with, delivery van. An interview with Hermes tomorrow. I heard. Yep, <laughs> yep. It's, it's a shoe in. <laughs> I, I heard if uh, if you're a delivery van, you're a key worker, and therefore you get the vaccine quicker. So I'm doing my best. Uh, just just to, not a pure off one. Would you if somebody offers you it tomorrow, are you taking it? What a delivery Andy. job? To be honest, mate, I no, don't Andy. really. No. <laughs> Come on, I need no, buy me dinner first before I take it. Um, <laughs> I would take the it. The vaccine, yeah. yes. Aye, yes. Yeah, get, I've get heard stories of people um, close to me. I won't say anymore, but like uh, close to it's, me. It's not Amy, <laughs> but um, that I've said that they won't take it, and I generally kind of believe why that would be the case. I mean. I, I, I had the same, but I think I, I talked them round. Um, so, hi. Is it my your dad's, My dad's already had it. Yeah. Is it your duty and, uh, to, like, uh, to to try and convince the the naysayers, the non vaccinators, to get something like this? Do you think I that's a human? I mean, thing? It depends. Just, I don't think so. Nah. It, I, I, it, it might need. It might need to be in maybe a few months down the line if we we realise that we need everybody. But at the moment, nah, I'm, I'm only going to convince the people I care about. I don't, yeah, I don't really. I, I just don't really. I'm not going to get into an argument anywhere, yeah. like with someone. I don't. I. Uh, I think it it's just, a, it's a strange one. That's a, here, that's a tough start of the podcast, mate. I'm so I'm sorry for that, guys. I know that was a deep. We went off the deep end there straight away. Serious issues. Yeah, it's topical, um, but you know, uh, yeah. it's what it is, mate. I mean, if the maybe if the vaccine came in the form of a delicious soda, the public would be <laughs> clamouring over it. Segway. Um, how's how's your week been, though? How has your Nick? It was your birthday. Sunday, yes. what day we'll be recording on Wednesday. Do you have a good I one? I did have a good one. I have turned uh, 34 and I feel I'm obviously the baby of the podcast. But I was, I I was like, about to say, I can't believe you're the oldest in the podcast, man. That's I can't believe. Um, I, it's just kind of mad how, like, time flies. <laughs> yeah, just like time flies. And uh, it's weird that being like we're all in our 30s and. Uh, just, just as, you to stop me there. You for not much longer. 40, I turned forty this year. But I was going to say we. I think the three of us live quite a youthful lifestyle, and uh, not that we're like, the running all that. But I just mean like we're like still like we guys in a way, and like I think that helps. Like you know, saying, man, feel when, like you're right. Do you know what I mean, so no, it was it was a good birthday. And uh, t- talking about being we guys, we we were we were extreme we guys uh, the day before your birthday actually. Yes. Uh, so yes, we were st- still in the midst of the, the big freeze. Uh, that we, we all we all played ice hockey in some way, shape, or form. And uh, I heard there was a there was a nice wee secluded frozen field. Can I tell a story? Quite... Andy ah, phones yeah, me. Right. Andy phones me. Right, <clears throat> gets in the bell and he goes, um, "Do you want to go to Bishopton?" And Bishopton's like twenty minutes from my house, and I'm like, well, "What the fuck is in Bishopton?" And he's like. There's a farmer's field that's flooded. And I was like, where is he going with us? And he's like, it's frozen. And I was like, I say no more. So I go down to the <laughs> I go down in my car. The, no, I'm, I'm gonna stop you there. First you asked permission if you could go. I didn't, Amy, well, I, didn't go play <laughs> I didn't want to be like the pure like bye. <laughs> Goes through the living room, he's already got phone, Montreal top my, on. He's like <laughs> when I phoned my brother he said jump out he's like handing the kid over to his missus and he's like I'm out see you later but um, no I did my due diligence I was saying I hope you don't mind I'm going to go and play hockey anyway the uh, I went in the car got my gloves hadn't played hockey um, like, I mean the last time I skated four years ago was in a game like a do you mean amateur hockey game and then <laughs> four years I was wondering <laughs> <laughs> no, but I just mean well, I was pro. <laughs> well, I mean, it was the NHL. Was literally, literally, four years oh, ago. Got, guys, last I'm time gonna, I played, I'm going to sneeze. I think. 
Just it was in a game doing my thing. Next you time I played is first life sneeze. Oh, jeez, oh, man. Sorry, but I was going to say next time I've played. Uh, it's in a bog in the middle of Bishopton but the funny thing was I had to literally I said to Andy how long are you going to be he's like 40 minutes and I was like oh my god I've got 40 minutes to scrub the mould off of my hockey gloves <laughs> which cool were like really bad Like, and the funny thing is Amy has never I've not played since I've met Amy um, so I had to start I had the hair dryer in the hockey gloves and she's like what is that smell? And for anyone that doesn't know hockey, like, it's like it is, nothing on earth, man. Nah, but I like it. <laughs> well, totally, I mean, like used, I'm used to it. The smell on your hands after you play. The, you, it doesn't it's matter how many times you wash your yeah. hands; it's not going away. But it is. It's fusty. But, but Amy's like dry poking around the house, <laughs> and you're like, "What is? What is that smell?" And I'm just like, just "Wait till she's got to deal with sweat." Oh, I'm like, "That's the oh, smell man. of glory. That's the smell of. That's the smell of." Many games won. It's <laughs> unmistakable. I mean, yeah, you, uh, yeah. you could not start anywhere, which is hilarious. But uh, we, not we, so we, we were to... out playing. Oh fuck, he's not finished his story. <laughs> well, no, I, I didn't was make say a, we were I out did... playing, and Al couldn't make it. Which was I couldn't make it along. Um, I don't have. Uh, despite my, I'll tell the story of you flinging your stuff out. When at last time when I moved house, uh, I went out to the. My stuff was in the shed. I opened the bag up and realised that my kit bag had been colonized by spiders and uh, I just zipped the thing back up and hoofed the whole thing and uh, <laughs> because you just you're you scared of spiders I'm not a fan but I'm also just like I mean that's if you I mean a hockey bag is not really packed very uh, you basically I, just chuck if, everything in if you're not there's, a fan of spiders you don't want to be putting in none that is in that bag there's just a lot of places to like hide and stuff uh, so I was like nah we'll just we'll just burn this obviously my skates went into the Hockey Hall of Fame uh, <laughs> previous to here's that a, just because here's a quick sidebar on hockey bags Andy do you remember Jordan's bag and it was like most hockey bags are like big long like, it's like a big hold all really sling over your shoulder yeah but, uh, Jordan had this thing it was called a hockey locker and it had like yeah, individual tall, shelves yeah, in shelves it not that I remember Jordan before he went back to Canada gave me that bag and said there you go mate my gift to you the hockey locker and I'm like I can't believe I've got this this is amazing and this is like after he, we've dropped him off the airport and he's went away I go home and open the hockey bag and he's taking the shelves out of <laughs> So I, instead of having a hold on that you can pack everything <laughs> nicely, every time I went to practice, all my stuff is like piled, just piled up. Into it. <laughs> and if Why I did open he take it, the it shelves out? What's come back? Because he bought a new, he was, he bought a new, he a new locker bag. Fuck, he was dude. keeping the shelves for the extra shelving. That's so cold, man. Oh, that is cold, man. Because yeah. um, you, you touched on spiders there, Nick, what, what are you scared of? You must have some phobia. Oh, oh I, 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 know was, I know a couple of things you're scared of. Yeah. You know what I'm scared of, surely. Birds? Birds, which oh, is funny because you're like you're like of the winged variety. That is. I'm not obsessed with pigeons. My dad's a pigeon. Um, My dad's a pigeon, but the um, I like any sort of avian creatures. Man, I'm not down with. In fact, most animals that move faster than me, which is all of them. <laughs> well, um, like when I, I can't really I think, deal with. I think when uh say when I FaceTimed you on Christmas with a dog, and I was asking you about dogs, and you said something. I think you quote something like, "I was like." I just don't like things that move independently of me or something like that. <laughs> I think yeah. just something. But see I remember that thing, though, the worst thing on the planet is to see if you're sitting in someone's house and I've got a cat and oh, the yeah. cat goes up. You're sitting in a chair and the cat goes up round the arm and then round the back of you. And now this vicious creature is like behind you with his claws and fangs and you're just, you're like, you can't do anything because you're like, where is that? And people are always like, people are like, oh, he really likes you. And you're like, I hate this cat. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't go to the zoo and just like, I wouldn't go to the zoo and just put myself in the monkey enclosure and go, ah, right, guys. Just <laughs> well, I, kick, for me, kick on with your day. The biggest test f- was when we had the office on St. Enoch Square, notorious yes. for pigeons and notorious for tourists. <laughs> feeding the pigeons and just Fucking making brutal. them congregate and we would just Gross. come out to go and grab food and you'd be like oh, geez. and then eventually some wee kid would run in the middle and be like hey next thing they just scatter and like the, the your, worst your man just hit the deck <laughs> <laughs> the worst bit you know the worst bit is like it's actually not sitting on the square it's the Marks and Spencers on Argyle Street oh yeah because they can get trapped 
under the 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 awning of Morrison's bed. What are you scared of, Andy? It moths. Moths, moths, really? I don't see butterflies. Fine, but moths, the wee dusty fucking. I've got, I've got quite I've a good got moth. A story for you. You might, this may, you may have nightmares. So it's not that bad, but I mean, for a, a, a mothophobe, um, when I was younger, I was, you know, like going to stay with your mate. So I was, I was having an OG sleepover with my homie Ross, and uh, his little sister, probably a couple of years younger, she was having a pal stain, and a moth came in the room, and then the moth disappeared, obviously, and. Somewhere in all this, the the pal was convinced the moth had flown into her ear. So it's like a wee girl, maybe, I don't know, not even <laughs> 10 years old, was convinced a moth had flew into her ear and was like rattling around her brain. <laughs> and, and like, do you know that way? Like, I kind of, it's like you kind of, you kind of hate the wee sister. Like Aye. he he hates the wee sister and by proxy, I'm just like, your wee sister's just the worst. And then the pal's the worst. And then like, I don't mean to be sadistic, but I was just like, I mean, there's definitely not a moth in her ear, but this is amazing because she's just like, and but you're da- telling her there's a moth in her ear. But what I can appreciate now is, and you'll really appreciate this, Andy, is like, as the dad sort of thing, he's like, I need to do this, man. He's like, I used to, he's like, he's like, it's like Friday night or Saturday night for a sleepover. He is literally what I think a few cold ones, man, and just, do you know what I mean? Watch your telly, and he's just get this like kid upstairs who's like, no, 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 no. No, no, no! I can feel, I can hear it in the inside my <laughs> dome. I'm just like, oh, I think man. I was just like, holy shit! But I mean, imagine you somehow convince yourself for that. One time, my we, me, and my my dad had to take my my mom tried contact lenses, and we ended up having to take it to the hospital because she, my mom was convinced it rolled back into her head. And when oh we got God. to the thing, basically the guy like has a look at the eye for about two seconds and goes like, that. Um, "I'm there's no there's no you don't have a contact lens in." Like it's fell out somewhere down the line my mum was having a meltdown that this thing had somehow rolled over in the back twice oh twice I've like had to or something so like Travis my, one of my kids he's he's four and twice I've had to get a smarty out of his nose oh, um, and like so far up that you have to close that nostril and blow into his mouth because he just sticks them right up his yeah. nose that's amazing did you not do that one time when he like, like sneezed all over your face basically oh uh, yeah because like you're holding one nostril, <laughs> you're blowing in the mouth and your cheeks at your nose. So as soon as you blow it, doesn't he just come out with just the smarty? Can I ask Everything? a question on this, Andy? Did huh? you, is this like something, did you just like brainwave this or was this one of these no, things? Where it's like, it's like kids get smarty on nose and you're just screaming at you like, Google it, Google it, no, that must be something. You get that in the dad, once you have the first kid, oh, you, you get, get the dad handbook. booklet, oh, you get right. the handbook and that's, that's page three. And does it specify smarties or is it any? Because when I, probably m ms do you remember when you were, see when you were uh, at school, uh, primary school, you would sometimes go and look after the the younger kids during the like what, if it was raining outside. Ah, what did you, you call to, that? Wait, uh, oh, we called know. it monitoring. Wait. Ah, yeah, yeah, you were a monitor. Yeah. One time, I had to take How's a kid. Prefect. And one, nah, prefects like no, high, high school. High school. Where no, did no, you we had Hogwarts? prefects in primary school as well. What? You and Hermione. Um, the <laughs> the same guy the same guy's like that. we used to just bomb it over for a fruit twist and a sausage sub on it right <laughs> <laughs> the no but this kid comes to me and he's like I've got blue tack up my nose and I'm just like a kid but I remember taking him to the office and he got the pure third degree from like the pure bad office lady who's like I was like this, the wee fella's got blue tack up his nose and she's like why'd you put it up there and he was like I was hiding it she, <laughs> she was like why are you hiding it he's like because everyone's trying to steal it <laughs> I was just like, I was like, this is on you. She was like, I blow your nose as hard as you can. And then, <laughs> every time he blew his nose, man, it sounded like a whoopee cushion. <laughs> as we buckled. She was like, you need to get out. And then, it, oh man. See, this, this, this has reminded me of something. Like, <coughs> maybe, we, maybe we keep it for a wee bit later on the podcast. Maybe we're going out a drink soon. But um, it was like embarrassed. Somebody had asked me about what's your most embarrassing story. And I remember two. And I'll tell you one because it's kind of related to that one. Um but I was like five, six in primary school and sitting down in the assembly hall, just about to belt out the old assembly anthems. Um, and I'm sit, sitting cross-legged on the, the parquet floor and I could feel this lump in my throat. I'm like, what's going on? It was like done at my calf and I'm like, what's going on here? So I kind of put my, my hand up my leg. It was yesterday's wife fronts. <laughs> pair of wife fronts <laughs> balled up in my trousers. And I'm like, oh no. And I'm like five or six. I'm like, oh shit, what are they here? And I need to like pure sneak them into my pocket and cut about with a fucking pair of skiddy wife fronts in my pocket. <laughs> 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 oh, 
So, oh, but I, th- I think maybe we'll come back to old embarrassing stories about later on the podcast. Yeah, but let's man. let's get get on to the drinks, eh? Yes. What we got? Who's, Who's kicking off? So I'll I'll kick us off. Um, and I, this is a strange one. So I forgot we were even doing us with the podcast. Though. <laughs> so um, for for those that have listened for a while, will know that I don't really like cream soda. But I'm oh. bringing us A and W's cream soda. You're bringing like us a cream soda. I'm bringing you a cream soda now. No, not not that any time MD brings a drink, they must like it. But guys, Andy, well, I like that. See based, on, of... see based on this. No, but wait, guys, I'm into cream soda. I think we need a rescore IBC at some we point. Might then, do, we might do. IBC could be one of the top contenders. Weird, weirdly, IBC is what I bought Jenny for. Um, IBC for anyone who doesn't know is independent brewing company's cream soda. Yeah, I bought Jenny some IBC for Valentine's Day present. It's nicely that's what I'm done. About. So A uh, and W, the Delta Pepper Company here. Um, this, is this A and W Canadian? Yes. No. Yes. No. Nope, yes. Yep. Do we yeah, know what A and W stands for? Uh, Andy know. and Andy Wilma. and no, absolutely no uh, Women. pre pre looking up of anything. I, I didn't look up in. I didn't do any investigation in this at all. That's all right. We can do it now. A&W restaurants is an American chain of fast food restaurants. Yeah, they do. I thought, burgers. Was, I thought it was actually it used to be. The, do you know what's the, the, the one of the most insane things I've I've seen in Glasgow <clears throat> was re- the the KFC up and round the corner from Sydney World used to be half a KFC and half an A&W. Do you remember ah, this? That's right. Yeah, and yeah, it was yeah. painted directly half and half, same building. Yep. You, you do get that a lot in in the states. You still get that a lot Not in like, Glasgow, though. Yeah, no, no. So, so it dates back to 1919 when uh, Roy W. Allen set up a roadside drink stand to offer his new thick and creamy drink, root beer. Oh, um, nice. Well, what he invented root beer. Well, I, it seems to be. So That's it was cool. this guy, uh, Roy W. Allen, and his mate Frank Wright. So A and W. So can Allen I just say Wright. before we yeah. kick us off, beautiful can. It looks like it's kind of yeah. like. Creamy Rustic. looking aged. I like the fact it says no caffeine, which is interesting because you would have think some of this would have, but most interestingly, 46 grams of sugar. I mean, that I mean let's, 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 we've, we've done a few we've done a few cream sodas already, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah look, at my, look at my new camera, just packing that up, Alex. Look at this way, it's got the slow zoom. Oh. <laughs> Made I with mean, aged vanilla. Hold, hold on, just because you said your new camera, then like. I mean, I, I could maybe hold this up here and we could get it on camera too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right, here we go. Let's, 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 yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I got high, I've got high, high hopes of this. Oh, the vanilla straight off the back, straight yeah, off the geez. nose. I, I think I just, I think I just sniffed about six grams of sugar, just sniffing it. Oh, now, oh, I'm going to come in originally because I'm not the cream soda guy. I'm not yeah, the cream soda guy on it. No, wait, wait. I'm not the cream soda guy. I've tasted a few now. I think this is the be- one of the best, if not the best one I've tasted. It, it, see, it says made with aged vanilla. There's a definite syrupy creaminess to this, more than I've had in any other ones. I feel like that vanilla's got <clears throat> that quiet wisdom. Like it's been around <laughs> for a few years. It's seen some things and it's got a lot to teach us. Um, That's a screamer. It's really good. This is... Uh, I mean, this is this is kind of silencing me, really. It's um, I'm actually interested in the idea of, you know, how, like I was going to say it's a craze. It's not really a craze. There's method behind the madness, like with steakhouses and stuff. They age the meat so that it develops complex flavor profiles. Is that the thinking behind aged vanilla? <clears throat> the 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 longer you leave it. The more like, complex the vanilla flavor gets. But is that not the whole like Madagascan vanilla that when you go and buy like good like, yep. vanilla ice cream that's like yep. aged vanilla that goes in that? This tastes like a good ice cream. But don't they see when you talk about it? So see when you age meat? Yes. What is the process of aging meat that starts to let it build a <clears throat> flavor profile or different flavor profile? They dry age it, so they dry it out at uh, table. But, and then some I've seen some places where they like they actually coat the meat in its own fat and let it age, which is kinda insane. It has like a glaze of 
the fat around it. Basically, all I was saying was th- the uh-huh. reason these people do this is to create more complex flavor profiles. And I think this is obviously what A&W are like, trying to say right now. Well, I'm sure there's levels to the vanilla game. I'm sure there's that, like absolute trash vanilla. And then, yeah. Oh, they wouldn't, Mars and Spencer's wouldn't be right in like I mean, Madagascar. but this isn't like, see, I don't, look I at don't the ingredients. Know if, this isn't like, this shouldn't be as good as it is. I don't know if this is, I don't know if this is a special cream soda of theirs. I don't know if you get a non-aged vanilla a and oh. but I don't think so. This high, was the only one I could high find. High fructose corn syrup. Hunters are like weird, like additives and preservatives. Aye, this, no, actual, no actual sugar. Like this no, shouldn't no be sugar. good. Aye, yeah. But it is. It's really fucking good. Let, let me say this and tell me if you agree or if you can even cash your minds back. I think IBC was was actually sweeter though. This is very I'm not, I'm this is not a diss on this. I'm just saying like this is my my kind of overarching statement on this is it's a very balanced, delicious cream soda. Maybe IBC was a bit sweeter, maybe too sweet. But I don't know if that's a thing. Um, I'm, I'm going to come in on my score. Okay. Unless, uh, so no, I, I get, I'm not the cream soda guy. I'm giving this a three point six, which is an unbelievable score for a cream soda for me. I think this. Uh, usually, usually on a cream soda, you it would you'd always say a one and done, but this is so balanced that this could you could. You could party with this all night. This would um, be perfect. A perfect accompaniment to some food, I feel like. Yeah, a nice A&W burger. I just realised I said 3.6, but I've already written my score on the sheet over here. I wrote 3.7. So I, I, I'm, I'm 3, I am 3.7. I was looking at something else. It was 3.7 I was giving up. I'll, I'll slide in and score next. I'm obviously quite well, okay. well versed in the cream soda verse. You're a professional cream soda taster? It's, yeah. I mean, I don't really know what to say. Cream soda, for me, is simple. If I taste one that's bad... I'll tell you, this is definitely a good one. And I think I will score it. I think I'll I'll probably go 3.5 on this. I wonder what what, what was stopping you like getting the the upper echelon so? See to me if you want if you want to put me in a spot right now and say is this better than IBC? From my memory, it's not. IBC was it was a special thing for me. But then I like my cream soda, like and a glass ball. Su- glass ball. I was just yes, about to say, there's exactly. a big, there's a big difference there. So. Are I, you being, are you being somewhat of a? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. The receptacle came in. Yeah, and he's, he's, so you're right out. The receptacle came in. So that I'm just whoever's put in front of me, I'll taste and score. Does IBC taste better and therefore get a higher score for being a glass bottle? That's on IBC. From my memory, IBC was a bit sweeter, and see, see in terms of cream soda. I honestly, the sweet is sweet is just keep throwing it in there. Like it could be because that's what I expect from it. I like a nice like flavor profile, as I was saying. I don't like to just. To, I, <clears throat> I've spoke about cream soda as being like the mother sauce, the sort of base sauce for a good drink. I think NW cream soda is doing just that. Um, I'm gonna go three point eight. I think it's quite. I think it's very delicious. Mm. I do agree with you, by the way, about. The I don't know how people. Thing. I just wonder what your thoughts on it. Were. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how people like really maybe look at our scores and. But I'll just say, just as a, a side note, like it's really good, man. Like it's really good. Yeah. Like if this is sitting on deck, just yeah, in a up. shop, and it's an option, I'm I'm copying it every time. What's the score, Andy? Uh, I, I'm trying mm. to get the wee thing uploaded, but my my computer's a damn thing and. Uh, kind of weather for morning. Imagine is this your absolute brand new super duper computer? Yeah, it's it's like done done something daft here, uh, and it's it's like I went to upload the the wee icon that tells us that I can put it up on the screen, and the the, the so the window's opened and it's just stayed there <laughs> and, and it's, it's broken. So what were we? Were we go old school with a calculator? No, I mean I know I know the answer. It's I've got I've got the sheet. Oh well, wait a minute. Wait, a minute. Oh, I thought oh, it's oh, s- suspense. Oh. No, it's not. It's no, it's not. It's broken. It's, it's three point seven. Three point seven. Three point seven is the score um, for A and W. Nah, Sounds about right. Yeah, it's not letting me upload the the scores, which is quite annoying. Yeah, but this could be. This like this is this ep, this is what was episodes are here, man. It's a big it's show. Totally. It's a big show. Um, Even just actually, looking at them lined up, it's when when Andy's sent in the schedule. 
I was just like, I was taken aback about because I was like, hold on, this yeah. is. But this what, is I will say, what I will say though is, it's it's a curious episode. Yeah. Now, there's just, some things that you know are going to fall flat. What I would say when I say it's a big show and it's a strong lineup, I've got high hopes for all these drinks. I this, think I want to love them. I want I, to find yeah, this is the hype. Beast, this is a hype beast episode. So hype, man! I just feel like every time we do this, and I see the the leaderboard in the background there, Mexican cola Dorito, then we get the guava, and then we got a three way tie at the top with Fritz cola. Club Rock Shandy is that what that one is? Yeah, it's Rock yes. Shandy. Yeah. And then um, McDade's Cola. Uh, I want to know. I actually want to knock them off. Yeah. So, so Gerito's none of them Mexican are my friends. Doritos Mexican Cola is a three point nine. So, if you want to knock in off that, you need a four or above. I don't. I don't want to like go about it, but I'm just, just mean like as I, I'm always looking for better. You know what I mean? Um, can I just well, I want to add something back to something we, we spoke about briefly? I, we were talking about. Um, Irrational Frills. Mm. And uh, Al mentioned the spiders in his hockey bag. But um, I wanted to bring up a story of when me and Al were in uh, LA, we went to Universal Studios and we went on the Harry Potter ride. Oh, and it was can, like a, can I stop you for one second? Yes, you can. 3.7. Yay! Oh. <laughs> well, clap. Um, and, I, and in the Harry Potter ride, uh, there's like... There's a big bit with the, the spider from Harry like Potter. Aragog, yeah. Anyway, the ride broke down right as the spider like jumps out. And the thing was like like alien right in our faces. And Al was freaking <laughs> out. He was like, oh, this is my spider. Do you know what's I actually... want the ride move. And the thing, the, but the thing was with the spider was like still doing the, the big dance. It was like, dancing. Man. <laughs> Did it not spray water on you or something I, as well? Oh, it. It's not well. Because it's actually... Uh... You hate spiders. I can't believe how... The, the reason I'm bringing that up is because you played it down. Like, yeah, some spiders. You know, I'm not a big fan of those guys. I know you are a shite bag when it comes to spiders. Well, just I, as much as I am is, when it comes to spiders. More like it's more it's kind of irrational because and I've, I feel like I've got better over the years because like when you get a gaff and you've got to like you kind of just like move out of a room because there's a spider I've had a few bad encounters and I think most people like I've been to Australia and there was like you know like a something the size of my hand was in my aunt's house That's and crazy. I was like yo there's like a spider in there like a murder there's a murderer in there and she was like <laughs> and she said something like uh I'll be in in a minute. <laughs> like, there was no urgency. Like, they get them all the time, though. Not yeah. totally. So I've sort of came at the idea of, like, a spider in my house. I'm not, like, jumping out the window. But actually, what's interesting you were saying about in, about the Harry Potter ride and the Aragog animatronic. Yeah, and uh, obviously, Nick alluded to the fact that I'm a wee bit of a theme park kind of uh, geek. I like to know how things work. Correct. Uh, I was watching some of my thing on YouTube about I think it's called there's a, I think it may be called megalophobia or something. It's something there was basically there was a name for people that are scared of like really really big thing like really big um, like statues or uh, monuments or just things that are like looming over you and they were relating it back to theme parks and stuff and how like you know theme parks build like giant animatronics of things and some people they kind of stand under it and all that and there was also a thing called sub mechaphobia which is the phobia of a uh, submerged or partially submerged animatronic objects so i don't know if anyone's done like the jurassic park uh, yeah. right or the jaws yeah. right yeah, yeah, these yeah, yeah. these people are literally jumping out the boat because the idea of something this the idea of a half in half out animatronic is like it's the worst thing in the world for them. And I was like, that's so specific, man. Like, have like, you yeah. heard, have you heard that story about? Uh, I've seen it on something before, but it was about there was like an animatronic thing at Disney, and someone got trapped in behind like this door that turns. So it's like uh, crushed to death. It was it's really old story. It's a, an old ride, and um, like basically the audience sat in uh, like a kind of theater thing. Mm-hmm. And there was a rotating platform that had four or five different scenes and there was like a show operator and between each scene she had like a kind of 
there was like a kind of spot she was to stand in and then they, there was like a mechanism that would turn it around and I don't know if it's urban myth there's supposedly a video you can see it's a bit, it's a bit grim obviously there's a video because they would kind of kill the lights and then they would rotate the platform and the lights come back on and basically the lights go off the platform turns and she's just like she and just then it's goes silent uh, she just like she's standing in the wrong spot and gets like crushed to death but that's I, I think I saw that on a thing a YouTube video it was like one of these things 10 most gruesome deaths at Disney or yeah. something like that it's, it's weird that you mentioned that though because we were talking about it just before we came on and it was because somebody put something in a group chat and it's this obsession that some people have with gruesome stuff yep like and it's I feel it's getting it's going to get worse and it's going to continue to get worse and I, I'm in group chats where people have like some real like horrific stuff I but I've imagine. eventually had to be I'm like mate stop don't send that stop forwarding it's this crazy and, and like you can see it on WhatsApp, it says forwarded thousands of times. And it's like, guys getting like their head trampled and like, you know, like, what? Why are you doing this? It's it feels like, like shock value is... But I mean, it's not shocking anymore. Though. That's, That's the crazy thing. Yeah. It's not shocking. Like shock value things are like, I've been lost, which is... What, what I don't understand is, bad. and this actually goes for a lot of content in the internet now. So even take like a meme, not necessarily a gruesome or provocative meme but see people that sit down and like or what are they, is there people that are like professional meme writers how do you get what's the pure credit do you get what's the back end well, so someone who's the first person that's just like obviously that video of the like the, the girl at disneyland is like it's obviously somehow leaked and circulated this actually might be a segue to this yeah, Cecil yeah, Hotel yeah. thing right Okay, that's very clever. <laughs> whoever whoever led us down this path is perfect. <laughs> but I just you sort of wonder how these and in the case of the Cecil Hotel will go on, it has revealed how certain videos become part of the public uh, record and are then but now obviously in twenty twenty one, like like you're saying about things getting worse, the the rate at which things are shared, it's like you sort of have to say to yourself with certain videos, like, I'm going to be like, I'm almost like COVID stuff. It's like, I'm going to be the guy who breaks the chain. I'm not sending this to anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one stops with me. Yeah. But Let it's, me, it's uh, crazy. It's like stuff that's like recent as well. And I think it's a lot of what I'm seeing is like, uh, like the ring doorbells or like, oh, like yeah, yeah, home yeah. CCTV and all that's picking stuff up. Like there was the guy that was in Philadelphia. It was a, a neighbors arguing over who a, um, about uh, clearing the snow. And one of the guys came out and shot the husband and wife in the head. Shh. The whole thing was on this ring. I'm like, why are you sharing this? Why, well, who, why like, are you sharing this? Obviously, there must be a process of going to like the the app and finding the clip. Yeah. It's like, where does it, the unless news, it's, how, how can you even believe that these are real? It was on the news. <laughs> like, literally on the news, the guy get, the guy killed himself as well. It was like CNN covered it a lot and the, the video was... Right. Like they talked about the video in the news stories. Just well, did you, did you, so, I remember sorry I saw that one. Ag- Go ahead. I was going to say, sorry if I'm being ignorant, but what is the, what is the Cecil Hotel you're talking about? Um, I don't know. We don't, I don't think it was mentioned in the podcast. I've, it's a, basically it's a show on Netflix. I've finished it and he's one episode in and... Nick has yet to watch it. What, okay, Andy, where, where do you want to go with this, Andy? Because uh, Andy, I want you, you sort of recommended it. it. Yeah, so, so I mean, we, we were talking about what, what you're watching, what's not watching, and, and I remember, I remember the story because I remember the actual viral video coming out about what kind of the whole thing is now based around. That. As I say, I'm only one episode into the actual show. It's uh, was it what what happened at the Cecil Hotel or the something? Yeah, no, I think it's it's got something right. It's, it's the, Netflix anyway. It's just in case anybody wants to watch it. But the title, so I'll try and avoid. Well, let's spoilers. not spoil it. No, I'm not going to spoil it. And what I will say is, there isn't really a lot to to spoil. The documentary's kind of just covers a, a record of what happened and the, how the investigation was handled and some different interesting fa- uh, facets of the investigation. But the thing that when I finished watching it. I just it it made me question kind of how as I don't know if divisive right, like how divisive certain documentary films can be these days where I'm just like what is it we were trying to point out here by making this and the thing about Netflix is they're so good at doing these things where oh, I I really can't wait for you it's just Andy so we can but it was like when I finished it and then I harked back to the trailer and I seen where the where the uh, the clips were pulled for from the trailer. I was like, man, Netflix can, they can really gas it up and get you to watch anything. Like it's the production value is so high. 
And then when I watched it, I was just like, I was like, who, what were they? I just couldn't really understand the what motive and some of the stuff. Some, yeah, th that's like the real, the, it was really strange. And it, it left me feeling a bit, a bit strange about certain ways they make documentary films now and what they're trying to, like how people are gripped by these things. Because the way it's presented, I was like, oh, this looks amazing. This looks Don't like. Don't you think Netflix it, in general though, like led you on a path of like, when they first started doing their own content, they were, uh, it was like, once you realized that one of the documentaries were or films were up to scratch, you were like, I'm watching all these. Because yeah. these guys was, are was making a murderer the first that big one that everyone, but that was that the first one that everyone was like, I think, I this. think that was when people realized, no, Netflix are probably legit here. Although, was Netflix not like they'd done a few like fiction stuff though before that? But yeah, I think but Net, that was our first documentary. Uh, yeah, another, another, the, I don't know about that. And that making a murderer, the born. first the first season of making a murderer was like, was like holy, like yeah. everyone was just like it was like you had you to just rinse it a, so that. Do you think making a murderer can happen without something like cereal? No, I mean that like, came off the back. That was no doubt about that. It feels like when cereal came out at that podcast, uh, the True Murder podcast. Well, it's not a True Murder podcast. It's a journalism podcast. That the first season was about a murder, but the it feels like this grip now and it, it harks back to uh, what you're saying about gruesome like posts and group chats and stuff it's like we seem to be absolutely fascinated now with like true crime and murder and yeah I mean but there's been through and phases that. of that as a like a, a nation or as a race we went through phases of that like I mean my mum was obsessed with 999 do you remember that but, show but you remember yeah. rotten, rotten.com as me, me, I was actually when you're talking about gruesome and how information's passed. I was actually going to bring up rotten.com and say it was a much more quiet, like not everyone really knew about I it. Didn't really it. share. I mean, some of the stuff what was, was that again? Was like, it was just, it was just a, a with gnarly site, man. Yeah. That had like images and like pictures of just like. And I remember when I got to college when I started, people were just it was just that kind of thing. Like, oh, have you seen this? And someone would tell you a mad story. But again, I just don't really have a great stomach for it. No. I don't have a stomach for it. Like, true crime stuff's interesting. I think a lot of the stuff that is interesting about it is, especially a lot of the American drawn out ones. What was the other one? The stairs. Staircase. Staircase. Yeah. Like, the legal process, the police involvement, how things can... Um, but when after we watched that, this hotel, I mean... Uh, Helena were talking about sort of true, uh, true crime stuff and how people are obsessed with it. And I was like, but even in terms of like drama and fiction, I was like, the guy that wrote that show, The Fall. Yeah. Have you seen that? The Gillian Anderson thing? Mm -hmm. About the Thanks. pure young serial killer. It's like really pure, weirdly sexually motivated, crazy and stuff. I, and I was just like, I mean, like, <laughs> see, what does that guy just go at? Mum, I've, BBC have picked up my thing, my show. My show. Oh, that's crack. <clears throat> what, what's that about? He's like, eh, hey, it's like, it's like a police thing. Do you know what I mean? She's <laughs> yeah, like, oh, yeah, is yeah. it like Scott Squad? He's like, it's not like Scott Squad. No. Like, do you know what I was like, do you know I was, was, was thinking about today, actually, that you mentioned mm -hmm. that? We should go on another drink. But I, I, before we do that, I just want to say that I was thinking about films. Um, and I was, I was, re I'm reading this book at the moment. And there's the guy, like, it's like a famous cinematographer, a guy shot like a bunch of things you've heard of. But one of them is the film uh, Seven. And I was thinking about this thing of like Seven to me is like it's a really good film. David Fincher uh, directing, and who's it's in it? Morgan Freeman <laughs> and Brad Pratt. Why are you doing this to me? Because <laughs> so we did it. David Shawshank. <laughs> but what I was going to say was, uh, it's interesting to me that a film like that that is like so cinematically rich and like has got this like. Really interesting. Okay, yeah, when I started this podcast, hold on, hold I did on. Not think cinematically hold on. rich was coming into it. Hold on. It's basically it's like a filmmaker's film, yet it crossed onto the mainstream. Like Matt, like I, one of my I remember my auntie telling me about it when I was like young. Now she was like, Oh, we went to see this film called Seven. When maybe you're a bit older, you could probably watch it. And I was just remember going, like, all right, cool. Like and then you finally watch it as a kid, and like it's only as an adult who is like any films now that I'm like, how did, how was that the Saturday night movie? 
But well, like, I mean, but I, I, mean, but I, I guess so, really but, it's, going to help but, it's, but it's interesting when these things like cross over, but it's like it is like this like cinematic tentpole film. Well, he's sort of like also this like mainstream, everyone's seen it. Like, but it's such quite, a weird film to see because it's like about yeah. murder, as in, like, as in, like. I guess Fight Club and to say, Fight Club's another one where that should have been like really really niche, but there's a point where like everybody's seen Fight Club. That was Fincher yeah. again. Yeah. You know yeah. know but it's saying? just interesting so, how these films are like, just like making a murder and stuff. It's like they shouldn't be mainstream. Like yeah, but then it's like, just they the way we consume stuff. Talk the, the way we but consume stuff now is so changed and like the way we share it. But anyway, before we go on to the next, I thing, consume a drink. No, in a second, because I've got one thing to say, because you've mentioned uh, making a murder on the staircase, but he's missed the best one, which is similar to that. The Jinx. Jinx is amazing. The greatest, Jinx is the best. The, the greatest best. true crime. <laughs> Look at this, I've got lighting up. <laughs> oh, the Jinx. So, the, the, if for anyone who's watching has not seen it. Don't tell the them anything about it. No, I'm just going to say, it's just to find it, it's called The Life and Deaths of Robert Dust. The Jinx is the kind of subtext to it. But, but go I'm going to give it. the Jinx five stars. <laughs> five point oh. We could have kind of absolute five deep dive. I'm giving a, the I'm giving a Craig Neal five point one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Jinx is let's, a ten. Let's get a drink. One of you said I've not got the stomach for it, but John, you know I do have the stomach for falafel. Mister Fal- <laughs> Mrs. Falafel on a uh, Dumbar- Dumbarton Road. No, Woodlands Road. Woodlands Road. This is where I picked this up, ladies and gentlemen. I give you. The strawberry Miranda. Matthew right. Thinking about to focus. Strawberry Miranda. Now, we've been kicking this, has obviously been a topic because we've had this in hand. On closer inspection, it's Miranda. So it is. But it is Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> I've just noticed that as well. Uh, Do you want to know else is really funny? That uh, in my research of this, I, I, because we got it from Mrs. Falafel at the van back in the day. Um, I had just assumed that this was like some sort of like Middle Eastern drink or Persian or something, but I found out in my research is actually from Spain. Spain, Spain. It's it says on the top of it, gout. Gout is that, a, is that an ingredient or <laughs> side effect? Gout, <laughs> gout, 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 gout. strawberries, <laughs> strawberry gout. Um, but the, the what's interesting is that. Uh, here we are again, guys, with another strawberry drink. Well, we had and a strawberry drink? Oh, yeah, we had strawberry fanner. Fanner, yeah. We also yeah. had strawberry millions, guys. Wait, while I uh, open this can, Andy, can you refresh me on the score of strawberry millions and strawberry fanner? Uh, so, firstly, before we do, before you do open it, uh, first drink from Spain. Oh. So, oh, yeah. um, how do you, in, Spain, in Spanish, how do you say really good? Uh, so million strawberry bueno. has an bueno. overall overall score of zero point three. Mucho bueno, mucha bueno. Uh, oh, we've got the kiwi and strawberry fago as well, which got a one point two. Don't count out the fago. Uh, and then Fanta strawberry, the Mexican Fanta strawberry, got a two point nine. Two point nine. But that was oh. in that, that that Mexican strawberry Fanta came in that bitching glass bottle. Cheers, it just guys. gives it. Gives you an extra 0.5. Let's do this. Cheers. But I think it was also, did that not come in the, was the Fanta strawberry not in the US election special? No, I think that was the no. pineapple. Oh. Guys. Ah, oh, interesting. This is, it's got a bit of a funny aftertaste there, but that mm-hmm. first sip was pretty good. It's so red. So red. The aftertaste is a wee bit flat, but there is an initial kick of sweetness that is, very pleasant. What would you call that in sound? A high pass four? A limiter? Zero. It's like it goes, it's like that. Ooh, so and then it just cuts off. That cuts you off. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, it's interesting. It's Tell you what, it's not very strawberry. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's mellow. Um, I was I was opening this, and I suppose even we look in the can and everything, I was still expecting a really artificial taste. It's not what you've got, man. No. It's almost like a. It's closer to like a, a strawberry milkshake. Like yeah, actually, I. <laughs> like, can I got that kind of vanilla kind of vibe about it as well? Eh? I, I'm kind of I'm sort of digging it more. We we see yeah. you said strawberry milkshake. Please forgive me. I'm going one of each. Oh, can you score? I think you need to score it first before you can do that. Too late. 
guys. I'm not doing. I'm not doing that until three I scored that. Three years earlier on, man. I'm not, I'm not judging. I'm not. I'm not affecting that. I don't you, think your score could, should count for this one. You're disrespecting Miranda. For those that are only listening, that on was the a kiss. That was a P. For those that are only listening, Nick just did take a mouthful of Miranda and then a mouthful of A and W cream soda. So I think his score should be discounted. Here. No, I don't think so. But I'm actually, <laughs> dis- I'm actually sad that it's Miranda, not Miranda. Um, I like this. Not very strawberry, but enough to make you realise it is strawberry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's quite it's, uh, three four steps in I'm like this is What's I always that? feel like I'm on I'm on guard a wee bit with a strawberry burner. soda uh, I'm like yeah, I, mean, I don't think I'm ever going to pick a strawberry soda off a shelf like if you've got I, I, yeah, but I'm very but if, I'm, if there's somewhere I'm going to pick it up it's kind of at one of these like food trucks with falafel vibes I'm like yo let me we, let me really just go I was talking in. I was talking today about how I was trying to pick up the strawberry gerito so Hey, maybe, maybe, maybe we could be. Well, Chirigos can hold on because Mirinda's coming in hot at three point two for me. Well, strawberry Mirinda three point two. Let me get one more because it's been getting. It has been getting better. Well, I'm going to come in. I'm, I'm going to go uh, two point nine. Two point nine. It's 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 good. It's good. I just. I'm not. I'm not I seeing Russia and buy it. I you should. It's for not me, Russia, but. Take a slow wander out and get some. And that's a 2.9. Three, as soon as you hit three, you're rushing out to buy that. Mm. I just don't, a recommendation. I, don't, I mean, when I, so I, a three says try it, if it's your bag. For me, <laughs> for me, it's going, no, for me, it's going. A three says, hey, uh, you try, know what? Try it. Yeah, try it if you get time. Yeah, I'm going to go to, I'm actually going to go 2.8 because, and I'll, because I'll, I'll put aside, I'll put aside note on that. No, 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 I'll put aside note on that and say, I really like this and it is good, but I would not recommend it to all my friends. Me and him are your only friends. In that, in that <laughs> case, Mirinda Strawberry is a 3.0. I knew that. that see, there you go. That's, bang on. that's bang perfect. On. Take a but wonder. While we're, here, while we're here, I'm going to do it. I do it. Oh, I'll, I'll do it. Which one yeah, first? Listen. It doesn't matter because you just mix them a bit. Do we have Especially. a name for this? I think the strawberry. NW overpowers it a wee bit. Strawberry milkshake. You pour way too much NW in there. <laughs> it's just a wee sneaky extra one. This is just cut. This is cutting through, man. I don't know. Just something fun. Let's it? let's not do that. <laughs> let's not do that. Again. <laughs> <laughs> That's That's a a across the streams again. What films? We kind of touched on this earlier. Oh, we kind of touched on this earlier. Um, we we're talking about embarrassing stories. Mm. Yes. Um, so I, I'll open my mind and then I want you to come in with your most embarrassing story of something so, to think of. So you, that Y fronts was just a <laughs> warm up? Not, no, because I, <laughs> I said any time they asked me this question, Act. I had two, I had two. So this one. So um, for those of you who maybe know, I, I, I worked in uh, music music venues and uh, toured, done a bit of touring and stuff like that. Uh, but then the band I was working with decided we're going to take a year out to write a new album. There was not really much work going so I went and got a job at a, space a, a, count, a council. So I was working at a council. That's really right. not a job for me. I'm, I'm now self-employed. I'm my own boss. Working for a council is just not my vibe. But sidebar, I was, I was sidebar on your sidebar. I remember when Andy Walter said council and he still say to me, dress for the job you want and he would wear three-piece suits to the council. <laughs> and the, the, but there was a reason for that because everybody else was fucking tramping I hate all of them to listen to this I want to tell them three piece man I no, three piece in a combo I, I'm a bit, I, I guarantee everybody remembered that I wore that so I, I was remember like that, I, I couldn't believe it I was like <laughs> I can't just, uh, he's going to hit Cotton Street of, of but that's thing, I was going to like the CEOs were just wearing rubbish suits and I'm like mate I'm coming for you so anyway anyway we digress so I'm not in the job long there's not really MD that I'm talking to it's not like I've got work pals yet I've not I've not migrated to the water cooler, but I've not been out for lunch for MD yet. I've only been there a couple of days. I'm still I'm still like moving to desk to desk until they find me my, my, my actual space. Um so I'm, I'm sitting at my desk. Um what the I mean it's it's maybe about eleven, so everybody just goes away to make their cup of tea for their tea break. And it, one of the girls sits quite sitting quite close to me. She's made an Oreo cheesecake. And she's dishing it about she's like, Do you want to be back a cheesecake? And I was like, Of course, oh, that's amazing. Thank you very much. Sit there and fucking tan my cheesecake at like half eleven in the morning or something. And it was How's lovely. It was lovely. Um so the day goes on, lunchtime rolls around, and I got I got a wee wonder to go and get myself something for the roll shop or something. I go and get lunch. 
come, comes back in, sits at my desk, walking away. And I, for some reason, I sit back and I go and stick my hands in my pockets. Um, and I'm like, oh, what the fuck is that? It's on my leg. That's fucking Oreo cheesecake. Just gum it. <gasps> a bird had shot on me at lunchtime. Oh! And I, g- <laughs> <laughs> and I gubbed it. <laughs> Oh, why? Because <laughs> it's, it's pretty much the exact colour palette. It's the same thing. It was just the black, the black and white, like kind of mushiness. I was like, oof, God. But is it a case of like when you do that, it's like can you, 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 you need to hold it together? Because if you start going, who people like, right. what's up? What's up? What's up? And nobody like, really knows me, so I can't really like play it off. I, I was just say your as soon as you went. No, I was, as soon as I put it in, I was like, that's no real cheesecake. Because they go like, they go, do you know, do you know Andy Dunlop? And they get one person goes like, is that the guy with the snappy suits? And they're like, aye, the, the guy that ate the budget. <laughs> <laughs> we spoke about this before, Adam. I remember saying there was a girl with my, we spoke about this because there was a girl in my school and it was like the day after school. Uh, she was walking along like a wall and then walking along these like wheelie bins and then didn't realise one was open and like walked straight into a bin. <laughs> And her name was, her name was like Sarah Jackson, and everyone just decided after that she was not her sure. Her name was Sarah Jane Jackson, and then the next day in school when that story got circulated, she just became Sarah Bin Jackson for the you whole mean, of I, school. I mean, I'm calling her that. Fab, migrated you know. to be Ben. <laughs> what? Ben. <laughs> was was a, a guy a guy oh. I used to play football with. His name was Alan Casty, and it's not the Alan Casty you know actually. Um, right. but when he was in school, he was uh, the the, boy, the other boys were playing football, and the ball comes over to him, and one of, one of the school bullies shouting, "Benny, Benny, he's a ball, Benny, Benny, kick a ball, Benny." And Alan's like, hey, "My my name's not Benny, fucking is now," and he's like fifty and is still called Benny. That's how so he was introduced cool, to me. That's crazy. Right, Mon, I get That's one uh, kind of. It's yeah, uh, as embarrassing. Although it's it's quite similar in yours, Andy. That it was uh, I had to keep my I had to keep, <laughs> I had to keep my cool head right. Anyway, what's uh, what's the big cinema at the top of the town? Cinema. Cinema. Well, I don't think it's anymore. View. Anyway, view now. So anyway, I'm in there. Me and Helena in there. Seen a film. Cool. Uh, and grab some snacks. Don't know, mate. Fuck. What do you know? The mask. I don't know. Seven. The mask. Seven. <laughs> yeah, okay. The Revenge of the Shawshank Seven. <laughs> um, so anyway, go to see a film, grab a couple of yep. snacks, juice and that. And I don't know if you're familiar with this particular brand of chocolate you get. So obviously you get Galaxy. Uh, no, they're called Counters. Yeah. Counters. Yeah. It's so like minstrels we no shell. It's like minstrels we no shell. Anyway, so get a bag of them for your things. Watch your movies, scan all the food, uh, and you'll you'll probably know this phenomenon of. If you're at a decent flick at that cinema at a busy time, you come out, you jump in the toilet, stowed. Stowed like a girl's toilet. So you're like, guys are piled up, guys waiting for your cubicle, and you're just, you know what I mean? You're you're basically all lined up, urinal style. So wave my turn, step up to the urinal, go down to grab my junk, man. And I'm just like, Oof, what's this? I've kind of gave away the punchline a wee bit. <laughs> I pull my hand out and, it's, and I look down. And I'm wearing a pair of like white Calvins as well. So I look down, it's just brown, it's brown all over it. And your brain just doesn't have time because I'm like, I'm totally toe here. Do you know what I mean? I'm lined up like it's a free kick and I'm just like, I look down, I'm like, how? How have I, how have I shot myself and not known? Right? So I'm just like, right, I'm like, pack up. I'm like, pack up shop, man. Didn't even, didn't even get it. Like, I mean, probably I built two hour movie, didn't even get a toilet. I was like, right, pack up shop. I'm probably the guys the next to me like ah, he never even went man <laughs> Shit. Stage I was like how right are you and just so I, I pure duck out man and obviously I've got a bit bit of funk on my hand and you know there's like a kind of vestibule of like you go out one door and there's like a no man's land and then you're back out right. and that split second of being in that nether zone I just go with, I just go with one of these quick ones just go like <laughs> for those for those listening audibly I just Past my finger, pra- past my nose, just to confirm or deny whether or not I defecated myself in the cinema. And I smell that sweet, sweet galaxy chocolate. <laughs> how, <laughs> and how did it get in your pants? I, obviously, I've just been, you know, when you're, well, put it this way, you see me in the cinema and you eat popcorn, 
Are you tell me there's nah, not a few few bits down, of popcorn man. here and there. Our counters just slipped right down, man. Right in, right in the <laughs> hot look, spot, and it's just sat there. It's slowly now, melting. No, a minstrel would have offered me much better protection, Aye. but I had to go counters, and slowly but surely, in that hot cinema, that bad boy melted enough to just raise the alarm, <laughs> and I come out, I and then Helena's like, "What's up? Are you like, we've seen a ghost." I was like, "I need to get out of here." <laughs> the guy was just like, "She's buckled, man." I was just like. Most embarrassing stories are to do with Shay, isn't it? <laughs> well, here's mine. I'm in Vegas. I'm in Vegas. <laughs> no, I'm not going to tell you that one, but I'm going to tell you one of them. <clears throat> I went to Las Vegas in the year was 2003. Oh, that's a while ago. Last year was 2003. And I had, like, easily, the, the, I was so ill for an entire week. We still don't even know why. Like, still baffles us to this day because my mom was like maybe you just don't travel well and I was just like I don't know but like I had like the worst diarrhea of my life for an entire like 10 day stretch it was like and it would just come on it'd be like you need to go to the toilet and by the way when you need to go to the toilet it was 10 minutes ago so I'm just like it just kept happening to me right to the point actually where I had to go to like uh, we were staying in like it was like pure package holiday we were staying in like circus circus like easily the shittiest hotel now that I've been to Vegas a few times, even been myself, I mean, at the time of the package, I bet it was a fortune. Like, cheers to my, I mean, my mum will be watching this, but like, it was cool because we were kids. But like, if you go now, it's like it's it's like a three star. I may even get a two star Vegas hotel, but there was oh, uh, oh, I was oh, disconnected. <laughs> I was disconnected. You continue. I'll I'll say either that he just didn't want to hear it or a spider attacked oh, him. Left there. Is he coming back? Ah, he's in. There he's back. <laughs> He's back, uh, back. You're back. We didn't get far. So I was going to say, so in Vegas, I went to the, they have like in all these hotels, like little uh, pharmacies in them as well. Because obviously like, I don't know, just Vegas in it. But then anyway, so like I ended up getting this uh, iron tablets and everything like to try and like stop my, to try and like stop like this shake basically fucking shake myself everywhere I went. But anyway, here's the story. We're in Madame Tussauds, right? <laughs> We're about two thirds of the way around. Bear in mind, 2003, I think I'm like 16. Oh. Vegas. I'm like this. Mama, I need out of here. And she's like, we've just been two thirds of the way around. I need to go. I don't actually remember being at like the Britney Spears bit. I'm just like, I need out of here. I, had to, like, I need to leave. And I was like, and it was, do you know that way? It was actually like we'd had dinner. It was, we were like, we were just kind of wandering the strip. It's probably nine o'clock at night. And I'm like, I just need to go to my bed. Like, I, I need to go up the road. I need to do this. My mom's like, you can't just go yourself. And I'm like, I've got a room key. I'm out. I'll see you later. She's like, that's not happening. So anyway, basically, the long story short is like, me and my mom leave and leave Johnny and are there straggling behind. And I'm horsing it up the strip. Like, just try to get back. It's two sods. It's two sods, uh, the Venetian. Yo, right there. No, he, he, um, he froze it. It's two, it's two froze. sides of the Venetian. Are you frozen, Nick? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I thought I froze. Uh, two sides of the Venetian. He's gone again. He's gone again, man. Your audio back, is, maybe? Yeah, your audio went, mate. What's going on? There's fucking gremlins in the house. It's not came back. I'm back. I'm right right back now. now, baby. Right, you just talk. Right, you man. just go. <laughs> two sides, but a couple of miles away from the, from the hotel. And we get to like... I can't remember which hotel, which thing, what casino it was. I kind of feel like it was like the Golden Nugget or something. It was like a pure. <laughs> how, how apt? It was like, <laughs> it was like some, it, was, it wasn't the Golden Nugget because that's on Fremont Street, I think, but it was like a pure Shanna, like pure, like it's, old school uh, Vegas casino. And uh, uh, I'm like beelining in to go to the bathroom because I'm like, I can't hold this any longer. So I dive Why did you not just go? Why did you not just go at two sides? Yeah, two sides, yeah. I just wanted to be back in the hotel room. You wanted so, a relaxing one. What did it take all your, I, take I, all your I gear off? I feel scuddy. <laughs> in the shower. I bust in, in the shower. I bust in the oh, casino. Shithole. Find my way to the toilets. And I am dying in the toilet for like 40 minutes. <laughs> but my mum has now sent a guy in looking for me. <laughs> and this, this guy's last chat with all those. Hello? Is Nicholas, you in there? 
Your mom's <laughs> outside looking for you. And I'm like, why did you turn the Canadian Mountie in? Well, what the fuck off? <laughs> so anyway, that was the most embarrassing when I've got all these Americans. Like, I've not got Amy text me saying, shut the fuck up. But like, I've got all these Americans like, it's like, hello, is Nicholas in there? Are you still doing a poo? Do you know what I mean? Did he post? Did he post you a pair of uh, golden nugget branded pants underneath? <laughs> like, like, I, I don't even know how much of my, my story translated there because of. No, no, we got, the, we got the whole thing. It's embarrassing, man. It's right, super embarrassing. I'm going to try and find the hotel where you segue. Uh, no, no segue. I think, it's, uh, I think it's the Bills something gambling hall, if it's on that side. It's not Probably the worst. Guy. It's Flamingo. It might be the Flamingo. The Flamingo. Because no. last time I was there, we stayed at the one across the road from the Golden Nugget, and I can't remember what it was called, though. It wasn't that. It was like on the left. I'll find it. Anyway. Let's, let's move on with our next drink. Uh, Al, you're bringing us one here. Yeah, yeah. Let's take a trip to uh, Venezuela. And let's Venezuela. Oh, Venezuela. And let's sample a wee bit of frescolita. And you have to say it like that. Frescolita. Frescolita. Now, this one's been sitting on deck for a minute, and I know yeah. we're all excited for this. Definitely. Um, the, the one thing it says, that although you're, you're bringing this one, I think we all agree that no, none of us can remember... Who where actually who actually bought this or where we got it from? No. Nah, and that is that makes it more exciting. Yeah, because I, I mean all I've done a quick a quick read on it of the Venezuelan vibes, cola vibes, uh, marketed by Coca-Cola, but definitely as far as I can read, it's not it's not Coca-Cola. So like I usually, I usually know, all I, Coca-Cola would say product of the Coca-Cola company on this. But there's like there's a uh, there's not really much to go off, no. like other than you know the name. It's uh, and the kind of color scheme, but it's very vague. And I'm just hoping that like I kind of like these ones because it's one of these things where like you pull up a can and somebody's like, "What's that?" Like they they can't they don't even they can can't catch a vibe. This is actually a cola, definitely. Are we are expecting this to be cola, though, aren't we? I, I believe mean, so. The colita, the red can, everything about it has made me think cola. But then you get the wee yellow splots. Mm. Right, can I, just, like, I think like I can't remember what the name of it is, but Jordan is obsessed with this thing in Canada called Tim Hortons. Fresca. No, Fresca is something different. Fresca is yeah. Fresca's Fresca is like watery. Can I buy? Ah, it's like is it not like vitamin water or something like that? Can I shit? I mean, Fresco. I don't know. I just I'm, I'm I'm holding up the can here for a wee bit more of the detail on that. The, the wee Venezuelan flag all the way around the rim and all the way around the bottom of it. Is that what that is? One thing yeah. I will say is from a, a quick bit of research on this that I did, I believe it is red in colour. It's not, you know, dark like a cola aesthetically. So I don't know if it's maybe a red cola. Like, do you know what, guys? It's only one way to find out. Um, I can. I can find the name of the hotel, but I think it was like some other flamingo or something. I had a much, by the way, maybe one day I'll tell you the story of uh, Luxor. That was worse. That's better. I mean, it's a better story. <laughs> this is not cola. You sure? That's no, like a red cola. A red cola. Off the bat, it's the cola. Interesting. It's 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 a big red, actually. Big red or like Tizer? Like a pure chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, it's um, not Tizer. Tizer's much more specific. It's very. It's like it's a, a, it looks like a watered down cola. Yeah, it's, co- it's closer Tizer. to Big Red. It's closer to Big Red, you're right. On a second one, Tizer's way, way sharper than this. This is a red cola. I'm thinking it. This actually may be the red cola of my youth. No, this, th- that's... When you grew up in Venezuela? <laughs> Let me tell you this, right? I'm not saying that I drank Frescalia as a kid. I'm just saying <laughs> I remember what a red cola might have tasted like as a child. I feel like this is what I'm remembering. Like you used to go to your grand's house, you just a cupboard fill it and a picture Aye. of a Venezuelan military man. <laughs> no, <laughs> you, you, like, when you're a kid a drinking red cola, my grandma was in the Venezuelan army. <laughs> when you're a kid drinking red cola, you're you're getting like a bars or a curries or a panda pop red cola. This Aye, is. And I said I wasn't born in Venezuela. I'm just. No, saying no, but, but I'm saying this is like a more yeah. mature. This is. It is man, it's growing. This, this is. Thinking my red cola. It nah. really is. It is. Like, see, at the end of the day. I mean, obviously, we are not the best guys to go on this because we drink every kind of daft soda there is. But see, realistically, I mean, when I think about it, do I want to be seen out in public? 
Somebody's like, what are you drinking over there? I'm like, red cola. I'm like, what are you eating? What are you doing? But I think, I think I might be able to like skip, you know, I might be able to, someone's like, what are you drinking? I'm like, Oh, it's uh, Frescalita from Venezuela. Oh, you get it? Can I get a wee, a wee vodka and Frescalita, please? Mm. See if you can't even ask for a vodka red cola. That's what I'm going with. See if you see if you were. Imagine you were like in a band and you, or for some reason you were getting a rider. You're know, like, I want a twelve pack of Frescalita. That's that's a that's a flex. That's like one of that's those good. ones. Like I want only green and brown M Ms. The guys like those four boomers. And uh, <laughs> what's that? Um, what's that beer that ends up on all the uh, Tuborg? Oh, hi. You're like, would you what do you want to drink? And you're like, oh, can we just get like a bottle of it? No, like, uh, do you just like Tuborg? You're like, no, nah, why? Because they're sponsoring this, that's all we've shape, got. this shape festival, we're at. <laughs> they're sponsoring stage four of Isla White, uh, 38 grams of sugar. Um, so yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're high on the sugar content today. Can I ask you, Gwen, again? Hey, with this scoring? In, oh, no, no, Gwen, for a taste again, with this in mind. Iron Brew vibes. Maybe. <clears throat> D- right. This could be the biggest sugar hitting episode we've had. Ah, uh, yeah. Do you think? For, 40, 46 grams of sugar on the a w 39 on the Mirinda. 39 on the fresco later. Does anyone else see the, the nights we record this that. now? Does anyone else plan to stay up late? Because like, I know I'm not going to be able to follow over. No I'll, I'll always kind of set myself up to say, like, I'll stay up and do, do some bits and bobs. It's five to set up, so I'll be, uh, <laughs> oh, snap. Right, Al, what are we going with? Dude, I, I think it's really good, man. I actually do. Hold on, before you score, what do you think? Iron Brew vibes. I see what you're saying. Mm. This is it's just light, it's lighter than I am. This is the it's just you know what it is it's the red cola of my dreams. Yeah, I've been waiting for this my whole life. But I do uh, have an iron brew vibes for you coming up in a couple of weeks, though, Nick. Like, oh, I, I will be that. buying this again. I will be sipping on this. Aye, me be... too. Ow, if we can remember where the fuck we were. <laughs> <laughs> Good call, man. You, can you see the t- t- like? Sorry, uh, podcasters, but I'm tipping the can up to the camera ever so slightly. Can you see that? What? What we got? It's Kind of looks like a like a desaturated red cola or like a, oh yeah it's, it's definitely it's a light light oh yeah I see the orange see that too? yeah nah man right, it's, score it score it score it you, I'm 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 into this man it's going it's going three point three point seven for me this is high this is really good yeah I, I'm in and I'm I'm going just a wee bit lower but I'm going three point five I wouldn't be surprised if this is the world's the world's best red air quotes red cola I think this is well executed nice packaging you know how we feel we do like glass bottles better than cans oh that's out of glass I should just say we've we've not had a glass we've not we've three cans so far tonight I think uh, I feel like I wish I'd drank this first do you know what I was thinking see before I drank this I was like I wish I had a palate cleanser. Sidebar, right? Sidebar, sidebar. I thought about this. I thought about this right before I came upstairs to record this. What would be the palate cleanser? How do you cleanse? How would some, I didn't want to Google it, but I mean, how, what, what would you suggest a palate cleanser? Surely it would be something savory. You should really got a a ready salted crisp would bring Uh, you back to like a baseline. A baby's baby's rusk. Uh, a wheat a bix, a dry wheat a bix. Dry wheat a bix. Come on, give us your score. Three point six. It's a three point six. A it's really, it's really good. It is. We knew it was going to be. And I don't think a red cola is always going to be. Red cola is a bit of a one and done. And uh, but this is. Let me just say um, right now. Put all your red colas in the bin and just go and find Fresca later. And let us know where you got it. Let us know where you got it. <laughs> so, Fresca later. Fresca later again, a 3.6. A 3.6. So, Lita. So, the sun just did. Yeah, just because you mentioned Weetabix, you see the thing on uh, Twitter last week, or maybe it was beans. the Weetabix and Beans, and then all, all the other. Can I just say something about this Weetabix and Beans bullshit, right? I literally seen the fucking person on. LinkedIn say no 
I'm so proud of uh, our work and uh, like basically this team of people who are like, oh, can get a fucking rubbing their own backs about like coming up with the idea of fucking putting baked beans on a fucking bar. We are it's like, wait, 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 brands wait, wait. interaction, like, get to for a viral for a just Aye, yeah, so it was a tweet, or okay. it was a tweet, and it was like some dry wheat bags with beans on it, and it was like mm-hmm. it was a cool tweet from. Uh, we have bags and beans but the biggest thing about it was all the other brands got got involved in replying to it and it was like spec savers were doing like um things they, they replied and they were like takes off glasses rubs eyes just keeps glasses off wishes i was blind or something like that and like all these They're other brands but okay, hun, and all this kind of stuff and you're just like you know what you cunts are fucking at it no There's that's that, 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 that was a but like let me just say right let me get like as someone who works a lot in the He's so passionate here man jeez Stuff does not fucking nothing because it's like these fucking idiot fucking marketing gurus sitting around going i wonder how we can be edgy how can we make this like what could we do to get us out there oh i know <laughs> why don't we put some fucking baked beans on the weetabix and write oh bread you get all the fun why don't we it's like fuck off like you could have 400 million fucking hits on this you could have spec savers fresh kalita Coca-Cola company, Quavers, the whole fucking gang going like, oh, you okay, hon? Oh, we're checking no, but, on. But see, see the thing was, the fucking thing, my rant here. And what I'm going to get to is, how many cunts went out and bought Weabix that week? Probably none. It was just like, what the I, fuck? I think we might, we've got a new addition to the next most embarrassing moment. <laughs> oh man, that's <laughs> it. Weabix rant. <laughs> Pure meltdown. Point. But do you know what? I do, I see where you're coming from. Uh, and I that is def- that is definitely the voice that those marketing people do. Forced viral was a bit bad, but I thought like genuinely the way that everybody else jumped on it and, and see if that see if I was to find out that that was all planned, I would feel sick. But there was some people who were actually quite clever. Like even some like uh, police forces were tweeting it says gonna stop phoning us, <laughs> although this is this is brutal. It's not actually a crime. And it was like, they were getting into the funnel, but I thought it was no bad. But I and I, I do know what you mean. Bit of fun. I also had a fucking rant about pancake day the other day, but we're not going to that. But the point I'm ah, making, you know, see all these people that are just like giving it fucking big licks about like, oh, oh my god, did you see Wee Bix's uh, tweet? We better go on that. Maggie, what should we tweet? Why do we ah. tweet something like uh, Heinz baked beans? Don't uh, we don't agree with us? Or I, I mean, just bullshit. Just like, well, why? Well, I don't. Well, the craziest thing is... Though, We've seen you never come up with a tweet for the, 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 I, But the, the role you're talking about of these people who are sitting around, they just imagine they're like... And in this current, <laughs> the current climate of COVID, you've got people going like that on Zoom. Well, what should we do for our tweet? Oh, Walker's crisps. Why don't you add some ready soldier to that? I mean... They actually, they actually mentioned it on in the government. They actually mentioned it in Parliament and everyone. Uh, of course they have. I'm not surprised. So you, know what? you got as angry about that as I get angry about adults with TikTok. So oh. I just think, like, see, when you've got the new Adam Curtis documentary out there describing how we got to where we are in terms of power and government and like global fucking shit show, and then you've got dickheads like fucking Weebix posting fucking pictures with baby beans on them. You're like, fuck, have you looked outside? The world is fucking imploding and you're putting beans on Weebix. Get a fucking grip. And, and they're not. But the craziest thing is, and it's like there's a line in Peep Show where Mark finds out that his uh, ex is going out. Oh, what is he? We're a new guy. And, oh, what does he do? Oh, he's a graphic designer. Oh, he's like, oh, that's just perfect. Let me redesign your logo. That'll be £100,000, please. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is like one of these people, just guys sitting in a beanbag or a guy just in his, his chair. He's just swirling. He's like that. They're just waiting for him to speak and he just goes, beans on Weetabix. And everyone's like, oh, <laughs> shit. He's like, uh, just make the check out. Uh, it's, and how it's, much that can it be? And he just goes, 100,000. It's not actually the, well, the issue I take, right? It's not we, we a bit try to be like creative and get their stuff out there. Because you know what? Fair enough. Task done. You got everyone involved. You got me angry about it. But the thing that makes me is all these other brands just going like fucking Greg sitting there going on the Zoom calls. What could we add? To, what would our tweet be? How can we like jump on this bandwagon? Bandwagon of what? Fucking capitalism is an all-time high. We fucking live on Amazon, and like, no. What if you just? But here's 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 one, and I won't I won't charge a hundred thousand for this. I won't charge a hundred thousand. But see if a company was to invent something like a tweet as simple as oh here's this, then it kicks off. Then you pay a flood of influencers to start the wheat of and beans challenge 
of like, is it, can you even stomach it? And you obviously, I mean, it would be disgusting. You know, people like, oh, it's stuck to my tongue type stuff. It's like, does that, all of a sudden, is it like, does that push sales a wee bit up? Ah, uh, yeah. If, if there's a chance of touching, no doubt it would. Just dumb. But like the... Yeah, full Nick is a heart attack. Let's get it's just us. dumb. No, what, what I was, was going to say, the hard to end it all was actually, it was more just the thing of being like, Oh fuck it, whatever. I was actually <laughs> I was going to say, no, let me finish. I was going to say, hold on. I was going to say oh, this. He's back in again. See, see when I'll I'll know it's about this, right? This is funny because it's a good way to end it. Um you know how sometimes we all have drank like four or five cups of coffee and you're like, I don't even fuck, I don't even feel the caffeine. I don't feel the caffeine. So I feel like <laughs> sugar to you. You're not, you're not a sugar right now. And it's probably due to the fact that I've consumed a hundred grams of sugar. And I don't, <laughs> Tweaking I know. on fucking hey, People are just going to pull loads of clips in this podcast of you out of contacts, edited together, and that'll go viral. <laughs> it's a fucking hit spy. hundred grand. hundred grand. Just, right. Right. just take, and how would you take your wheat bricks? Actually, yeah, we had a dollop of fresco later. I'll tell you how uh, Shona used to make mine. Warm milk. Money. And That's sugar. it. That's all I needed to know, mate. Warm right, milk, milk and sugar. And she would start all together and make this weird porridge thing. Aye, that's the, it's the only way. It's the only way. Actually, that's the only way I knew how to eat a bit. Eat a bit. Eat a bit. Eat a bit. <laughs> you are tweaking, dude. <laughs> right, well, let's move on. A final, a final drink. And I'm going to take us to the hallowed ground. Where are we going? I know where we're going because I've got the hangry here, but pretend I've We're not. going back to McDade's. Oh. Fuck's <laughs> McDade's, they're back with their, their premium line, as we were recommend to get. Currently, their original cola premium line sitting atop of the leaderboard. McDade's, try, try American deal. orange cream. I'm still trying to sign the right. deal with shame. Right, I've got, I've got thoughts before we open, and I'll just start a, a quick dialogue on this. Now, Good call. Read the, read the label top to bottom and I'll stop you. McDade's American Orange Cream. Now, I've also seen, as you guys will know, the other premium line, McDade's American Cream Soda. The addition of the word American to this, these type of drinks. Now, a does not say a Canadian Cream Soda. IBC doesn't say American Cream Soda. Bars, you... I believe bars might still say American cream soda. Might just say cream soda. No, it's, but, oh no, one of them says ice cream cream, ice cream soda. Right. Anyway, you know, kicking this off by calling it American orange cream, American cream soda. What do we think about that? See, Bring I don't on. mind it. I don't mind it because you've got the, the Irish made American born, uh, Irish born American made. They yeah. have, McDade's is an Irish brand. McDade's is legit. That. Okay. They can do it. Can I okay. add something that's on the label as well? Just off the base of my rant there. Sunset yellow and the lure of red may have adverse effect on activity and attention levels in children. That's that's what I've written, man. I've never seen, seen that before. You've never seen that written in a drink. I drank mental. Dude, you that's on it. That's on Jolly that's Ranchers. Right, let's, right. Let me go on. The twist I've never, I mean, twist it's called up. it's not an orange soda, it's an orange cream. Twist, twist off. Yeah, it's twist. Oh, oh, I've just went and done it, man. I've just went and done it too late. Now, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to you guys having this because I know you are into the, the creams. I, of course I have. And McDade's has been a high high hitter. So. It smells like air freshener. Nah, it smells money. It smells like... Do you know what it smells like? A Terry's chocolate orange. Mm. Sorry, that's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was kidding. Oh, was kidding. I was too confused. <laughs> That's how my Chris, fucking that's how my dashboard in the cars got fucking yeah, melted yeah. chocolate all the front of it. Christmas oh, Day in next lab. What's, what's this? I'm just chowing down in a fucking magic tree. Magic tree. <laughs> <laughs> this shit's money. Good, it? Get it together. Because this oh, shit's money. It is good, I don't It's so oh man. Mate, <laughs> what's going on? Mate, Dades have absolutely smashed oh, What's man? What's in the water there? What? What is going on, man? Drugs. This is ex- oh, this is exactly how I wanted this to taste. Fucking McDade's, man. 
fuck you, Seamus. <laughs> Every fucking time, man. Here, do you know what? let's let's get into the politics of this before we dive deep into the flavour. <laughs> so, because I, I don't think we've had an episode. James is doing the Irish the Irish people by like giving them that plastic bottle shit. Tell you that. I man. don't this think is... we've had an episode since we we all watched. There's, there was a wee video that we we shared between us. Mm. That Seamus she- McDade, who is was it third or fourth generation McDade running the company? I think it was third. Yeah. Fourth. Um Earth. which I think I'm looking forward to he has said he'll come on the show, and I think that's when we bring back the glass bottle uh football, football special. special for but, sure. Which we pounded. Yeah, we, we pounded the OG, the plastic one. But um and, mm, is, yeah. is what it is. But I mean, come on, what's what's going on here? It's the cane sugar made in America, glass bottle. It's the whole thing. I mean, it's like, I mean, we watched that wee video. My dad seems like a, you know, he's a, he, he's a chilled out family man just doing his thing. A small business can hang, but I mean, he's got it figured out, man. Yeah. He's yeah. making good soda, Mr. McDade. Mate, never mind GameStop. I'm buying shares in this guy. <laughs> we'll bring I that mean, up when he comes on. Fucking I'm also, I'm not for these plastic bottle ones, but. Um, Mate, good. I, am I, am I really right good. saying this? The carbonation is insane. Mine is yeah, like yeah. dancing. It is yep. dancing in the hang. It's so good, man. I mean, it's, it's not even that. Like, if you look up at the top of my bottle, like that's carbonation that's caused all those bubbles all Mate, up. Mate, 100%. Top. It's a frothy. It's still bubbling. That's what I was saying. It's like. It's still bubbling. Do you know It's big bubbles. You can, get see, like, you can hear the sea yeah. in it. Yeah. Those, those are big ass bubbles, man. Come on, get in on it. Look at that. And sell sound effect. I mean, I mean, come on. He's went two in a row, man. It's two for two in I a mean, row. orange cream is not really something I thought I would have really been that into, but it's pretty delicious. In yeah, terms I of the days, is it Olympic? It's the Olympic Games. The gun goes off, and they ran straight in to the first hurdle and knocked it down. And then after that, they just were like, "Joe, oh, is that?" Really, the first guy's fell. He's oh, first. last place. He He's was meant to be over playing football. He uh, ended up in the relay team and he fucking face planted it. But then oh. so much ground to cover. McDay's cola picks up the baton and he's off, man. He's off like a fucking demented flamingo. And he's it's just, just <laughs> well, now in, now in the gold the bronze medal position with us. The, the, the last oh leg could be taken. Right. Do you know I love about this though? Do you know what I love is like it's so original because there's like or, an orange cream, orange cream soda. I'm just, of it. Yeah, I've, I've had an orange cream soda before. We used to tour yeah. America. I'm in America, like there was, a, it it was like a cracker barrel. Do you know what cracker barrel is? It's like a it's a chain, but it's like pure old country shop. They sell mm. amazing sweets and they sell lots of different. Mad I think I, is it usually the side, just off the side of the road? Um, but uh, like. So Barry, who was a, who we toured with, he he loved a, a soda, and we'd always go for the black cherry and all that kind of stuff. We'd always try different ones. And that was the first time I ever done orange cream soda. Well, it, it was an orange cream soda. It was just orange soda, and I loved it. And this reminds me of that, but it's better. And I've also had 120 grams of sugar before. I've had this one, so I'm buzzing. Mate, uh, ow! Look at it, man! Look at the color. The color, the color. See me though. The, that's iron brew. That's an iron brew color. Like no, that, iron brew is not the color. To me, I don't think the color the color makes me think that it's not going to be as good as it is. It's a luminous. This is big, mate. This is so big. Hey, come on. You want a score? Is that what you want? I'll give you a I'll give you a score if you want a score. Want but you might not be ready for the score. It's a I four point two. It's a four point two. I, I brought it. Um we're giving it a 4.0, four flat. Never given a flat score before, and that's that. Four on the baton. Here he comes. With all the power Nic- in my hands. Nicholas McDade. No, it's not about power. It's about, be- it's about being honest, man, speaking from the heart. The way you spoke about fucking beans on, uh, fucking wheat bags on toast. <laughs> Maybe we should do like a thing that's like... <laughs> The show after the show, where we all try to get our lives together again to try and get some sleep, man. All right, Davina, come on. Fuck, up. Fuck you, Weabix. 4.2. Oh. 
guys. A change is coming, man. Four, four, two. I'll be honest with you guys. There's no change coming. That gives it a 4.1. Ooh, nice. It's equal top. There's now four at the fucking top. And no two way. And three drinks are Irish, and two of them belong to the, the powerhouse, the juggernaut of juice. I'm not even going to try and put it up there. The <laughs> Sultan of Soda. Juggernaut of juice. <laughs> <laughs> the Baron of Beverages. Keep going. Keep going. I don't know, mate. The, the Pharaoh of Fizz. The Pharaoh of Fizz, that's good, man. That's insane, man. It's really good. It's really, really good. It's uh, and it's, it's it's so unique. Yeah, that's what it's, I'm saying. Like, you, I like that. No other, no other drink I know that's doing that. I mean, no nah, man. So we've we've got three McDade's drinks left for you to try. We've got the glass. There's no football. The we've football the special and the banana is going to be like that. The banana one is an absolute curveball. Strength, but it's like the it's, true test is the true test is. Is that McDade's cream soda? You would now we've had an AW on today. You get the IBC, everyone knows soda folk. There's a few heavy hitters out there. Does McDade's come in, sneak up behind it, and just slit its throat? Fucking <laughs> 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 just to just to say though, just to kind of recap the whole episode, that is easily our highest scoring episode. Easily. Like it's it's the episode, the episode, episode, episode as a whole. All the episodes, but we should maybe start doing that. Take the, the average of the scores and mm. so like the four. A and W come in, they, they slot in a ninth place. Mar- Marinda goes in a 23rd, Frescalita nice. goes in a 13th, and McDade's goes joint first. Andy, add up the individual scores and then give us the aggregate of the four. You mean add up, mate? I've got a fucking quality spreadsheet here that'll do that for me. Spreadsheet it then. I don't know what the, the, the average score of today's episode was. I mean, I'll answer that, I don't know. What's happening with a spreadsheet? I, 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 I don't <laughs> call it too soon. What I will say is, if today is an episode of Stranger Things, that episode with the uh, million strawberry, the other one, that is the upside down. <laughs> that is the absolute inverse of what we've experienced today. The average score was a 3.6. 3. Strong. 6. All recommended Good. by the yeah, boys. Recommend. Yeah. Um, Love it. Wow. Tweaking. I'm glad we did that last as well because it was. I wasn't expecting it to be that good. I was actually worried about bringing that in last, and I placed it last because I knew there was a big, the big hype behind it. But then when we had those, I was like, shit. I don't know if this is going to stack up. I don't know how it's going to go. Yeah, but but wow. So much momentum now with McDade's man. It's pretty. You know what happens is that's what I was exactly what I was going to say, Andy. The expectation goes up, and you know what? It's like I want them to win. Do you know what I mean? Can I, I make this? Look, uh, they are the DJ Khaled of soft I've, drinks. We've got four up at the very top. I brought every single one of them. Nice. Just saying, guys. I mean, what do you, what do you, what do you want, a cookie? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want, I was going to, I just want to reiterate um, to the people We're who are all winners. Watch, please, if you can, if you will, go on to Apple Podcasts rate us five stars, give us a review. It really would help a lot in terms of getting us out there and getting us more subscribers. Um, even if you're listening as a couple or whatever, like both of you hit the five stars, hit the review. If five people, so I think there's like 15 reviews right now or something, not sure. But if five people from today do this, Give you us five eat, stars. You will eat beers on me a bit next show. <clears throat> well, no, 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 I will tell the more embarrassing story of the Luxor in Las Vegas. It's probably worth How's it. How's that? It's definitely yeah. worth it. Aye. I mean, I, I feel I feel like I'm on, on a wee bit of a cloud now. Well, I, just, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed the scores. Um, I don't even know what I do, man. I've, I'm going to need to build something else to get the ones. <laughs> I don't what know. What could I mean. we... Should spitball like something else we could do that is uh it kind of looks like a stoop, doesn't it? Like stairs mm. in the house. Yeah. Maybe we we'll could have some it. sort of like uh, a little set design back there. Shelves all the way, and it's just we've got the the top, which is a 5.0, which no, so I mean, the five point oh, which no 
I'm yeah. telling you, as soon as way to soda. everybody's got these, um, you know, all these things are sort of noting in your head, all these things you want to do when the restrictions are fully lifted, like when life goes back to normal, the boys are on a flight and we are going to, we're going to County see Donegal. the weekday. Melton and County Donegal. We're going to now, that's what, that's, that's where it's at. I mean, you saw the footage in that video. The Serb has got to look at all social channels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but aye, another, another great episode. Um, I'm, I'm, fuck it, I'm buzzing to get into the next one. Um, I think we'd, we'd kind of discussed that uh, we kind of knew that was going to be a big hitting episode. We're maybe going to need to come in with some real stinkers for the next one. Some real, real stinkers. Hope so, we have a good view sitting in the There stash. is a theory. Well, but it's, I mean, if we've not tried it, it's just we're basing it on the physical look of the can and just a feeling, just an intuition we have. But I we are know. so dead. So is there, is there no scope for us to just keep bringing delicious things is that the window <laughs> or do we need to put ourselves through the ringer we're going to need to do it at one point I should say actually that was our 60th drink as well so oh, firing oh, cheers what, what better way to celebrate I, I wonder what we'll bring for the number 100 but uh, uh, thank you very much for listening again that has been episode 11 of 5 Star Sodas make sure you're following us at 5 Star Sodas across all the social medias uh, we'll be back next week with episode 12 and some more drinks. See you then.